This is Mark Fletcher, and welcome to my world. Welcome to Southern Tales, Tall and Otherwise. The internet tells me that these are the seven skills students learn in school. Critical thinking and problem solving, collaboration across networks and leading by influence, agility and adaptability, initiative and entrepreneurialism, effective oral and written communication, accessing and analyzing information. Curiosity and, ima and imagination. Well, in our little West Tennessee town, at Katie McKellar Elementary School and Park Avenue Junior High, we learned a few other things as well. And, like I say, it's a Southern thing. Sit back and enjoy. This episode is sponsored by the best children's book for adults of 2019. Headley Outsmarts the World contains 25 original watercolor paintings by Roz Webb, England's top illustrator, and a story from the South that both kids and adults will find heartwarming, funny, and a teachable moment. Find Headley Outsmarts the World, Headley, H-E-D-L-E-Y, Outsmarts the World at Amazon.com, or follow the link on our page at brognetmusic.com. Southern Tales, Episode 7, School Stories and More. Tonight, we hear a little more about Southern schools, elementary and junior high, and my experiences there. This should be fun and insightful, or I don't know, something like that anyway. If you haven't listened to previous episodes, there's some characters in here you might need to know beforehand. So please pause. You need to go back and listen. I think episode one really has um, is one of the coolest ones because uh, these stories are meant to build a foundation about the people, personalities, and places that we are going to visit to talk about all the stupidity and craziness and just life growing up in the South was back in the 70s. Um, I've lived this life. I've heard these stories. I'm still here to talk about it. Not all of us are. This is stories about me and my family, brothers, sisters, cousins, aunts, and uncles. Some related to me, and some might as well be, and some we're just not real sure about. Um, there may be some disputes about the actual facts. This is the way I remember it, and in my opinion, every goddamn word is true. I went to Katie McKellar Elementary School. It was named after a Tennessee senator who served longer than anywhere than anyone else in Tennessee history. I, I think that's always actually all that he's actually famous for. Um, Katie McKellar was born in Alabama and moved to Memphis, where he was a crony of Boss Crump. Hmm. Uh, and why our school was named after him, no one knew him, and he was never mentioned. It's kind of like the Keith Short Bypass around Jackson, Tennessee, or actually goes through the middle of Jackson, Tennessee now. No one ever knew who Keith Short was. I still don't know. I mean, I guess I could Google it, but it doesn't even matter. Um, anyway, life in school was the normal Southern way. And what, what does that mean exactly? As described before in previous episodes, 
Jesus literally was alive in Southern classrooms and often the topic of discussion from our teachers. I don't think many of us kids ever talked about Jesus after the uh, daily lectures we would get from many of our teachers, but Jesus was there, you know, and I was pretty sure of it. Um, it was just normal for those moral values to be taught in school, usually usually by your homeroom teacher and maybe, maybe some others. I, I think maybe my fourth and fifth grade teachers were a little lax. Uh, I did have a seventh grade teacher who had a crush on me. No kidding. I mean, I didn't even, I was afraid of girls, but she was a pretty young teacher and she even let me teach her class for a six week period. I mean, she used to brag about, brag to me about other kids and other classes about my photographic mind. I think her name was Miss Adams and she weirded me out. The other kids hated me. I'm sure in today's world, her picture would be on the TV screen while she's being processed for something awful with one of her students, or maybe a couple of them. I hated going to her class every day. You know, in a previous episode, we just we passingly mentioned Mrs. Manus. Okay, we more than passingly mentioned Mrs. Manus. Certainly the queen of Jesus for sure. Um, but we did learn a little more, like shyness. Shyness got knocked out of you pretty much in the South uh, on day one. There was no such thing as toilet stalls for the boys or urinals. We had a trowel, kind of like a long bathtub, and the little boys would just stand around and pee. I don't ever remember looking at anyone else. I was just always hoping I didn't pee on my own shoe. Um, lunchtime was different from our northern and western counterparts, pretty sure. Um, there was just some things... Uh, that we're just going to be what they're going to be. Rolls? Not at our school. We had cornbread every day for my first four or five years anyway. And it wasn't that bar Boston Market sweet cornbread. Of course not. Cornbread is not sweet. The tea was always sweet. I don't remember ever seeing a packet of blue or pink stuff in our lunchroom. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. Tea wasn't a choice in those days. It was only white milk for two cents. And I remember when we got to junior high, you could get chocolate milk, and it seemed like such heaven to me. Choice was never a choice until junior high. Then you could choose chocolate milk. Great. Now, Mr. Medlin, he was my seventh grade science teacher, and of course, he was a man of the good book, too, and I, I really, I respected him a lot. I thought he was a great man. He was always joking and using levity to keep keep us on our toes and and, and to keep our attention. Um, like for instance, he's where I got the term X lax, meaning relax. He used to, every day he would, when the kids would get excited to be talking, he'd say, yeah, X lax, everybody X lax. It was kind of a way to lighten the mood. I still say this to my kids to this day. Mr. Grinder was my eighth grade science teacher and he was younger, tougher, not as funny. I, I think he might not have had a great sense of humor. Uh, he was a pretty serious guy. And he, he took science pretty serious. Maybe himself, too, I think. These are during what I call the spitball years. It, it seemed... It seemed everyone... I don't know if everyone... All the boys in... in probably all the boys in the eighth grade had rubber bands and projectiles called spitballs, which just rolled up paper that, that you could launch. You know, you'd fold up the paper or even better index cards. Sometimes spit made it more pliable and projection, projectionable. I'm not sure if the popular kids were doing this or not. I, they never talked to me. Um, probably it was just us spazzes and dorks and losers uh, who were doing this because we thought there was some science in it or something. I mean, girls didn't talk to us, and so we played our little war games, each with our own little gang. Ours was called the Henchmen. I don't really know why, but it does sound pretty cool. I mean, maybe I thought of that. Probably not. We'd find times in class or study hall where we could bombard the other gang. But, but back to Mr. Grinder. It was winter, and he has window air conditioning unit covered with paper. One day before class, one of our projectiles missed and smacked into the paper, made a hole in it and a really cool sound. 
So the rest of the 10 minutes before class began, we were all up there trying to see who could hit the air conditioner covering paper the hardest and make the biggest hole and the loudest sound. And we were having kind of a big time. Someone said Mr. Grinder was coming. We all hit hit our chairs or a little desk. And, you know, it was the desk chair. Anyway, we were all sitting there, and he came in. And it wasn't too long before he noticed all the holes and all that paper he had over his exterior window unit air conditioner. And he started asking, who did this? Of course, I mean, no snitches. We were all cool. And one by one, he asked some people to go out in the hall. Now, he didn't ever ask me. He asked maybe 10 people to go out there. Some of the girls, I think Amy, Amy Robinson might have been one of them. She was pretty straight-laced. Anyway, he came back in. And he said, okay, I know who did this. And you can either raise your hand right now or you can wait for the worst punishment because you didn't admit it. Oh, my gosh, was Jesus talking to me? Or maybe I was trying to talk to him, hoping he could come and rescue me from this situation. Needless to say, my conscience kicked in, and I raised my hand, and one other kid raised his hand. And there must have been ten of us doing it. Two of us raised our hand, went out in the hall. The first thing Mr. Grinder said was, I want you all to know, I just said that shit. I, I, no one told me who did it. But I really appreciate you guys admitting it. That's really, really cool. Now bend over. I'm going to hit you on the ass with this wooden paddle three times. They call it licks. I'm getting three licks out in the hall from Mr. Grinder, the most feared upon lick giver in the whole, the whole school. <sighs> so I took my three licks and went back in the class and thought, why did Jesus tell you to be honest? There was nothing gained here. I mean, I could have not said nothing and everything would have been cool. Oh, well. Um, wasn't long before it came time for the eighth grade research paper. Man, it was a big deal. Um, and, and it was a really big deal to me because whoever had the best paper was going to get a medal to hang around their neck on awards day. I'd never had a medal before. Heck, I'd never won anything before. I think even in farm team baseball, we'd always finish second or third. Once again, I didn't win. Mitzi Patrick won. My paper was entitled, How Municipal Governments Can Help Solve the Energy Crisis. I was so proud, and it made me mad that Mitzi won. I guess I shouldn't have been surprised. She was a female me. She was pretty much a spaz, a dork, wore glasses, and she was just generally smart. Um... That summer, though, she was riding her bike and got hit by a car and killed. I felt horrible for being mad at her for winning. Maybe I shouldn't even mention that part of the story. It kind of brings me down. I mean, anyway, during the, the, the research paper situation, we would go to the library once a day for like an hour where everybody's in, in there at their tables sitting there working on uh, their research paper, reading magazines or books or encyclopedias. You all remember encyclopedias, don't you? We had like 10 sets at Park Avenue Junior High. And and this is going on for a month. I mean, everybody's in there at six period, and we're working on a paper. So basically, you and your four or five friends would be in one of these round tables. And, and, and we were all diligently working on these papers. And remember I mentioned the henchmen? Yeah, those guys. Well, among the silence in the library every now and then, you'd hear a thump. The sound of a spitwad hitting someone or something. It was kind of exciting because you'd make sure the teacher wasn't watching and you would like peer around, you'd pull your rubber band back and you'd let it go. And before it hit, you'd be back looking like you were studying so they wouldn't even know who it was. It was really exciting. I mean, shoot. And then you're looking like you're writing or something studious or innocent. I thought of myself as a pretty good shot. And I got out one of my special spit wads. I had engineered it myself. I mean, it was, it was paper built around a paper clip. And it would go far and fast. And I'm pretty sure it was going to put a little red spot. So with my triple rubber band, I could sting somebody. So I took aim at one of the tables with one of the rival gangs across the library. I let it go. Flam! 
started zooming across the room. But as it zoomed, it rose up a little and a little more, and it continued to sail onward and upward until it flew right over Mike Morin's head and whacked Miss Stevens right upside the cheek. Oh, my God. Oh, my heart flew off the register. But just as it hit her, talk about Jesus swooping in, a group of black kids broke out in a huge fit of laughter. I mean, every kid at the table was about to fall out of his chair. It was incredible. Miss Stevens, with a red spot on her cheek, stomped right to that table and demanded to know who did it. They all pointed to Cecil Jones. He had a guilty smile on his face, and the whole library oohed and awed as she grabbed him and marched him out of the library to the principal's office. I was stunned. It turned out what had happened was that just at that moment of Miss Stevens' sting, someone had dared Cecil to eat a fly. No kidding, this is a true story. Cecil chomped out the air and ate the fly. This is why they were all laughing. When she took him out of the library, Cecil had no idea what he had confessed to. But imagine at the office when he told the principal that he hadn't shot no spitball, but instead he'd ate a fly. Uh, how far do you think that story went? I mean, that was it. There was no more investigation. They just, I guess they just didn't believe him, and he probably had to face Mr. Grinder. Uh, so... No one knew anything. No one said anything. I wasn't in trouble. Cecil took the paddling. And I think I retired from the henchman. My heart didn't quit beating until I got off the bus that afternoon, where my dog wasn't there to greet me, by the way. Oh, and by the way, Cecil, if you're listening, I am so sorry. I hope you don't know where I live. For the liner notes this episode, and all episodes of the Southern Tales podcast, please go to broadneckmusic.com. Here you can find out some more about this episode, um, some of the mistakes that I made, some corrections, maybe some more depth. Of course, you can also find out about our sponsor, Headley Outsmarts the World, great children's book for adults, and... Our kick-ass theme music from T.R. Crooks, a little band from Paris, Tennessee. Contact email address, stalespodcast at gmail.com. Send me questions, opinions. You can also relate your stories. Maybe we'll have an episode or episodes with your stories, too. And if I get enough questions at the end of Season 1, we'll have a question and answer episode. Once again, thanks for listening. Please tell one friend about the fun we're having on this podcast. A new one will be uploaded every Monday to the end of season one. Thanks for listening.